Ahoy Bashikni, it's Jen from Dream Prague. When I was a kid growing up in Los Angeles, a lot of my friends' parents were immigrants and going to their homes was like going to kind of a different world. So they'd make different food, so their houses would smell different and they'd have different furniture and even like different rules for behavior. We lived next to an Orthodox Jewish family and I remember that one side of their kitchen was only for the meat products and the other side was for milk products. And I was babysitting once and I used a plate from the meat side and I put cheese on it and they had to throw the plate away. That was new for me. Now my American home in Prague, Czech Republic is not fascinating on quite that level, but I'm definitely squeezing an American way of living into a classic Czech space. So for those of you who are interested in what a classic flat looks like in the center of Prague, I'm gonna get into that. And for you Czech viewers who want a little peek of what my American home feels like inside, we'll get into that too. Speaking of things we expats miss from home, I wanna thank this week's sponsor, NordVPN. Wait, you're not using a VPN on your computer, tablet, and phone? It's time to join the rest of us in 2022. If you're living abroad, like me, or even if you travel abroad frequently, a VPN is essential. Not only does NordVPN protect you from hackers and generally make your digital life safer and easier, but it can also give you access to things from home that might not be available in your host country. Wanna watch a TV show that's only available in your home country? Or learn another language by tuning into a TV show from abroad? Or maybe you're dying to catch your local sports team, but you're out of the country on business. NordVPN solves these problems for you by changing your IP address to a different location where those services are available. And it's super easy to use on your laptop, phone, or tablet. All you have to do is click Quick Connect on your device and choose the location and then start streaming. And when you stream with NordVPN, you can be sure that all your data will be kept private and secure. NordVPN is offering an exclusive deal for DreamProg viewers. Just click on the link in the description box below to get NordVPN's two-year plan with an exclusive deal plus four bonus months for free. It's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. When you do, you help me support this channel so I can keep making you more videos. So thank you. I live in Prague too, fairly close to the center in Vinohrady in one of the old pastel colored 19th century buildings. Coming from America, especially the West Coast, the last thing we wanted was a modern apartment, right? We wanted tall ceilings, we wanted huge windows and crown moldings. We wanted to live in old Europe and old European apartments come with their own quirks, but we'll get into that in a bit. So our flat is shaped like a giant square with four fairly equally sized rooms in each quadrant, plus a small walk-in area and two half bathrooms. The walk-in area or shed scene is usually quite large in these old Prague apartments from what I've seen. Sometimes they're as big as an entire bedroom, which I feel like is kind of a waste of space because you're paying for every square foot or square meter. And so why waste it on a room that's only good for like entering and exiting through? So our shed scene is fortunately just big enough for us to come in, sit down, take off our shoes and hang up our coat. Now in California, you just store your shoes in your own closet after you wear them throughout the house, but not in the Czech Republic. It's very important to take your outdoor shoes off, put on your slippers before you enter any living space. This brings the additional problem of having the shed scene full of an entire family's shoes. So you have to figure out a good way to store them where they're not always in the way. Jutting off the pshed scene is the toilet room or the zahod, which is probably three times as high as it is wide. 
So in many older Czech flats, the zahod, the toilet room, is separate from the shower room or kopelna, which was a little weird at first, but now I love, it's totally appreciated because if someone's in the shower, you can still go to the toilet and vice versa. When you think of moving your entire life to Europe from the United States, you are probably thinking new start, new style, new furniture. You just need one suitcase and then for everything else, you're gonna start fresh. That's not what we did. Long story short, when my husband quit his job in America, the company paid to move all of our belongings to our final destination, wherever that was gonna be. And so instead of choosing somewhere in California, we chose Prague. Prochne. So we needed to get an unfurnished flat here. And this one was basically a giant empty box with pretty parquet wooden floors. There wasn't even a mirror in the bathroom. I had to buy these mirror squares at Ikea. There were no closets, no storage space, nada. Basically the only thing in the entire place was this one kitchen cabinet and countertop. This part here was empty and the landlord said we were responsible for putting in either a dishwasher or a laundry machine. Clearly a laundry machine was gonna save us from the most manual labor. Um, so we bought one of those and Hansa installed it. But that means that we wash dishes several times a day and dry them on this teeny weeny drying rack, which is super annoying. A clothes dryer is definitely not typical in older rental units in Prague. And so you've got to get yourself a drying rack. Count on your jeans taking two days to dry. But now, even when I go back to America, I never use a clothes dryer. It just feels like very wasteful of energy. Um, and I'm obsessed with not letting my clothes shrink. So I'm a, a laundry hanger for life. But I'm still not used to the towels that feel like cardboard. A few of my Czech viewers have commented like, oh, you just need to iron your towels and then they'll feel soft. And I'm thinking like, I barely have time to wash my towels. There is no way in hell I'm taking the time to iron them. Since there was no shelving or cabinetry, we had to buy these metal racks, which I thought would be kind of cool because it kind of looks like an industrial kitchen. But now I just walk into my home and the first thing I see is just like a mess of, you know, peas and, and spices and jars of stuff. It felt weird to invest in like cabinetry for a flat I don't own, so there you have it. Also being amateur chefs who love to experiment with new recipes, Hansa and I have like every single use kitchen appliance and tool that one could possibly need. I wish we were kitchen minimalists, but we are kitchen maximalists, which is hard when you don't have storage. By the way, I think many of my viewers believe that Hansa is Czech, but he's American. Hansa is just his nickname. So he doesn't bring any Czech influence to this flat. He's 100% American. Some Czechs ask me if we cook Czech food at home, which is kind of silly. I mean, why would we do that? That's like moving to Pilsen and then brewing your own beer. Like all immigrants, we cook mostly foreign foods, just not American foods, exactly. We cook Indian and Mexican and Korean and Middle Eastern, and probably about 90% of it is vegetarian. And so naturally we've got tons of foreign herbs and spices and ingredients that we then have to find a place to store. Oh, and of course we have a stash of American junk food. Now recycling works differently in every city in America. In California, we had one bin in the garage and then everything recyclable went in it and then it was picked up once or twice a week by a recycling truck. In our Prague flat, we have six bins. Six bins in our home. And we have to take them to the corner recycling bins anytime they fill up. And those bins take up a lot of floor space. But we have less trash. And if you were wondering why we don't just store all of these kitchen appliances and foodstuffs in this pantry, that's because this is the shower room in the kitchen, naturally. 
Like the Zahod, our shower room or kopelna is probably three times taller than it is wide. It's definitely a one person shower room and it doesn't ventilate well. There's a vent up there, but I'm pretty sure that's just for appearances. After several years of steamy showers, the entire ceiling peeled off in large chunks that used to fall on us in the shower and Hansa repaired it all in one weekend when I was away, bless his heart. And now it's starting to peel again. We tried to call our landlords as little as possible. We want them forgetting that we're here. So we don't bother them when we have problems. I think we've called them like twice in 10 years for, you know, emergencies, but that's pretty much it. I think a lot of these old flats used to be a lot bigger and they got partitioned into smaller flats over the centuries to house more people. So bathrooms like randomly end up in kitchens and sinks end up in hallways and there's not a lot of ventilation. Oh, and the heating is conducted through radiators in each room, which keep your cardboard towels nice and toasty and speed up the drying of your jeans. Our living room definitely has immigrant flair. Hansa and I lived in Japan for three years um, prior to moving to Prague and we bought some of our furniture there. And back in the US I used to go to a lot of garage sales and buy old broken furniture for like 10 bucks and repair it and paint it and that's why nothing in our home matches. Our artwork as well is a bit of a hodgepodge taking us from college dorms to memories of California to our travels through Japan and India and Europe, to official portraits. I've randomly had this mukha print for 25 years since before I knew that that was done by mukha or that mukha was Czech. It's a very college dorm room print. And I got my gloriously tall European windows. They are double paned, which is necessary during the winter to keep the apartment warm and to block out the noise because we live on a very loud street. The windows in our bedroom face the street as well and there are trams on our street, so there's quite a bit of noise. And when the stag parties drunkenly stumble down our block at 3 a.m. in the morning, we can hear it all. Don't get me started on stag parties. You'll notice that the windows have no screens. You can just fall right out of them. These would probably be illegal in the United States. We mitigate that risk by not hanging out of them. So far, we've survived. We chose the other street facing room as our bedroom, but it doesn't have a door. So we threw up this curtain rod and curtain, which works fine. I think it must have been like a dining room or some other formal sitting room. It's huge, perfect for our oversized California King bed which you can't buy sheets for in Europe. Gotta get mom to send those. Also, I don't think Czechs ever use flat sheets. They just use duvet covers and then they wash them more frequently, which seems like a lot of extra work. This Union Jack dresser was from my furniture painting days. Um, Union Jack furniture was all the rage in 2010, along with silver patina and calligraphy fabric all of which I created in my American garage. They don't tell you that you live with these design decisions for many, many years. This was about the best thing we ever bought for our flat. We lived at the giant exposed metal clothing hanger thing for eight years. And I finally broke down and bought this massive closet from Ikea. And now I never have to look at the chaos inside my closet. They must have needed closet space in 1850, right? Like, where did they put everything? Did people have like only two pairs of trousers? They probably did, didn't they? I'm the asshole. When we moved to Prague, my sister lived with us for six months. So we purposely chose a flat with an extra bedroom for her. And then after she left, we kept it furnished with a, with a bed as a guest bedroom. This is so typically American to devote an entire room to a theoretical guest. Like if someone happens to visit you, you have a bed for them. And finally, we were like, why are we paying a quarter of our rent 
for a, a person that might come one week a year. So we turned it into an office, which to be honest with you is a bit of a hot mess right now. I mean, it's kind of like hobby storage slash office. My dream is that I could use it as a filming studio, but I end up just filming in the living room like I'm doing now. Usually our bikes go in there and we have an endless amount of hobby supplies that we haven't used in like 10 years, like fabric and a 110 volt sewing machine and lacrosse sticks. We are the king and queen of hobbies. And we're also way past that age where our parents let us keep anything in their homes, like at all. Last time Hanzo was home, his mom said she had a present for him and gave him a box of his old baseball cards, which now live under our bed. Prague is our permanent home, and so everything we own on the planet is in this flat. We even have a two meter surfboard in our bedroom. Czechia is a landlocked country. Usually I store filming equipment like lights and tripods in the office, but they also spend a lot of time out in the living room where I mostly film. And then this door takes us right back out to the pshed scene, which is kind of nice if you have someone else in that room, a guest or whatever, they can exit through there. They don't have to go through your bedroom. Many of the blocks of flats in this part of Prague have a central green space in the center of the building. If you go on Google Maps and you look at the um, satellite view, you can really tell how much greenery there is but ours is a little awkwardly shaped and it's actually taken up by a restaurant and a bank. But we do have a lovely view of some Airbnbs with excellent sunny terraces and most of the guests like to sunbathe in the nude. So that's entertaining. Perhaps the biggest conflict between a classic old Prague flat and an American immigrant is where do I put all my things? The answer is leave your things in America. If you're moving to the Czech Republic, this is your perfect opportunity to start fresh. Two pairs of trousers, tops. And definitely leave your surfboard at home. You're not gonna need it. Are you interested in an expat's adventures in Prague, Czech Republic? Then you're definitely gonna wanna subscribe to this channel and I'll put that subscription button over here somewhere. And if you give this video a like, I'll make another one for you next week. Uvidíme se příště. Ahoj.